Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab. Today we're looking at the rather, well, hot off the press. This is the Artoria Astro Lab, and this is a completely new product category for Artoria. It's a stage keyboard uh, with its own sound source in it. What you were hearing there was uh, the piano, uh, which is physically modelled, which is why I was tweaking with those parameters. Uh, and at the same time, that was recorded via the onboard MIDI looper, which is also a feature. So as I said, this has its own onboard sound source generation. And what that is, is 27 instruments from the V Collection 9, so you get a whole bunch of stuff in there. Pianos, electric pianos, organs, if I bring the overlay up, oh actually I can, uh, you can, I can peel the, oh isn't that satisfying, I can peel that off. So we've got pianos, so if we go to the, we can see, uh, if I go to the home, American grands, electric pianos, uh, organs, basses, and as you can see here as we flip through them we are, we've got the kind of V collection equivalents, including pigments, which it also runs. So this synthesizer is effectively a DSP which runs special versions, or I guess ported versions, because this must be a Linux core underneath all of this, of the Arturia V Collection 9. So it's essentially not just a Sage keyboard that does pianos, it does all of that synth stuff too, but we'll get onto that in a little bit later. So this instrument is a 61 key piano. It looks very much like a kind of one of those lifestyle home piano things. In fact, so I think you can get kind of legs that you can fit on the bottom of it that would make it look all nice and tasty. Uh, but it's so much more than that. This keyboard is weighted, velocity sensitive, and it has aftertouch, not poly aftertouch. I would say it kind of feels a bit like it's like a heavy synth action or a light piano action. I think it's a custom key bed that's made by Artoria and it feels really nice actually, it's nice to play. So coming around these uh, wood effect moulded end cheeks we've got the rather delightful power supply and power switch which has a backlit A, 12 volt 3 amp locking power, so power connection, uh, we've got a computer USB-C, uh, USB-A host 5 volt maximum 1.5 amp which will do storage or MIDI class compliant, stereo headphone output, left and right output, then we've got the stereo input, uh, left mono input with gain control, sustain pedal input, expression pedal input, auxiliary 1 and 2 and MIDI in and out, completes the back panel connections. Pitch and mod wheels, rather nice uh, level display on the mod wheel here, octave indicator, octave switch, transpose switch, and a bit of space, I guess you could put a, a laptop or a, well not quite a laptop, a phone or a tablet here, up and chord mode, uh, the transport controls for the MIDI looper, it's not audio, MIDI, and then this thing in the middle which is uh, really unique actually. This is a kind of an, a custom piece of hardware UI for this particular instrument and it outside is a ring that you can rotate. You can sp also move it up and down left and right so it's kind of like a joystick and a rotary encoder with the uh, LED in the middle of it, or I guess it's AMOLED or something. It's very, very bright and clear, plus a little bit of additional stuff. Uh, in fact, also, should mention above the keyboard, we have uh, light indicators. And that's handy because at the moment they're all blue. So let's look at this section here. We've got part one and part two, and that's because we've also got dual timbrality, so we can have a split or a layer and that kind of keys in with the lights that are above the keybed as well. So if you can see here when you play a note you've got the keybed and if I want to add a part it's very straightforward. Uh, let's bring the screen up. I'm just going to go part, add a part. Yes we'll go to part one and then we can scroll by type instruments. Let's have a look. Let's add, I don't know, a clavinet on part two. Okay. Now at the moment that's a layer, I can easily make that a split, so... We can fully customise where we want that split to be, absolutely no problem. We've also got four macros for each instrument, so each macro will is labelled like as such, so brightness, timbre, time and movement, but this really depends on what you've got programmed into the, uh, the preset, so for instance if I had a uh, pigments patch, those macros would correspond to what I programmed in the patch and vice versa with all the other kind of potential instruments that you've got here. Remember there are, gosh, 
1,300 plus presets in here. So a lot of presets to choose from. You've also got playlists, which allow you to create kind of custom song lists and set lists. So it's easier to get at those patches and organize them how you wish. So moving on to this section, we've got four effects units, two inserts and two send effects. So if I just come back to here and I bring this on, pressing shift and hold will mean that I can show you what we can put in any of these. There's a whole bunch of ones uh, that are available. We can assign them to either or both parts. Uh, these send effects are the same, so we can then shift, we can have analog digital delay, we've got various different reverbs. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. I mean, it's got a heck of a lot uh, of DSP and power. Uh, there's a 22 gig of storage in here because some of these sounds will load samples as well, so the augmented uh, version. But when, in terms of polyphony, say if we're using one of these physically modeled electromechanical or acoustic instruments, that will give us up to 48 voices. Uh, if we want a synthesizer, say a pigments or one of the other V collection synths, that's going to be limited to eight voices maximum. So just to clarify, you don't need to own the Arturia V Collection to be able to play any of these V Collection sounds from within Astrolab. If you want to edit those sounds and adjust them and tinker with them, then you do need to own the plugin because then you can save presets and drop them into Astrolab and play them as you have programmed them. So instead of play some of those more synth patches, uh, that's my original grand, and I, oh, I did this rather nice uh, Rhodes, which I thought was very pretty, very kind of... Uh... Ulrich Schnauss was what I was going for. Got a bit of flanger, a bit of stereo pan. Anyway, I digress. Uh, then there's, here we go, here's a pigments one. This is called Octave Swirl. Touch dialed in. And you can hear there's a whole bunch of effects on here, but actually looking at this, there are no effects dialed in. So these are the effects that are actually inside the patch itself. So you've got that additional power because a lot of the V collection instruments have onboard effects, which you can actually also add. We'll take a look at the editor to see what we can do with, with these effects. But I mean, I can add now, if I want, I can add more delay. Press shift and I, I can change the delay time. I can add some more reverb on it. So reverb on the reverb or whatever. Let's, you know, I mean, turn them all on. Why ever not? So I've got a whole load of effects on top of the effects, but that's not going to kind of add any more issues to the CPU. Here we go. Here's another um, another one. This is called Granny Piani. This is a granular sample, a granular patch on uh, um, pigments, uh, which has samples in it as well. <laughs> I don't think the macros have any effect because I didn't program them, but if I had, then these would have actually, would also be doing what they, you know, how they were labelled. As we get, actually, let's come back out, let's go to some uh, keys and pads and then we can have a look at some of the other synths. Here's a CS80 pad, pad from the uh, um, classic synth pad. So that's a pigments one. This looks like a fair light and... Oh, I don't know what that is. That's a split. So you can see we're basically loading like a profit five. This will give us a maximum of eight voices. But by the same token, we've also got 
String samples. This looks like an augmented strings. Or big strings, which looks like... Kind of some sort of emulator. It's hard to see. Even though, the, you know, I mean, it's still a small display, so I can't quite make that. Looks like an emulator. That looks like... Quite sure what that one is. Or brass. OB, for instance. So you can see that, you know, we can actually play a lot more than just what you'd expect from a stage piano. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about splitting. Um, so this is a patch that's got actually a pair of pigments. So in the left hand I have... ..a kind of koto type of thing. And in the right hand... ..a sort of shakuhachi. My split point, actually, I think I'd like to go to split to there, so I just press shift and split, and then the split's all sorted. That's nice and easy. I'm having some weird polyphonic issues here. This is... I think it can only be maybe the left hand patch has uh, only five notes assigned to it. It's hard to know though because I can't get in there and find it. I have to look on the computer. But let's back to this. Um, so now say I want some. I, there's there's that's modulating. I don't really want that. So I and but I do want it on here. Let's press shift and split, and then in part one, we can go in and just sort of see what settings we've got access to. So uh, we've got the low note, the high notes of the range, obviously, uh, input channel, output channel, these MIDI channels, octave transpose, and uh, just general transpose, so we can change the octave of inch interval split, which is handy. We could say we want pitch, ah, right, so this is where we filter out the stuff. So we'll get rid of mod wheel, maybe get rid of aftertouch as well. Uh, and we'll do that. And then for part two, shift part two, uh, no, shift MIDI, so we're going part two. I don't want the sustain, uh, but I'll have everything else. So let's go back and see where we are now. <laughs> Uh, if you want to just change the volume, you just press and then you've got the volume control. OK, let's take a look at some of the sort of meat and potatoes, the nuts and bolts sounds. I mean, this is a stage keyboard, so what does it sound like for stage? You heard the piano at the beginning that I played in and that had quite a lot of effects and was using the MIDI sequencer. It's, oh, the, and it sounded quite nice, actually. So let's just take a bit of a closer look at that. So this is called American Acoustic Ground. It's based on the uh, uh, Piano V3. Very responsive. This keyboard feels really nice to play this piano. Uh, we'll see what the macros are on this. I'm not going to go through all of them, but we've got this is kind of the hammer noise, so we can make it into a real almost like a felt piano. Bringing it right round to almost that sounds like there might be a sort of ta a pin, you know, a drawing pin or something on the hammer to get that real clack. Then we've got tomba, which is actually sort of detuned, so this is perfect. So we can detune it to a kind of pretty wonky amount, which I don't think we'll like. And this uh, is the dynamic amount, so... gives you a level of dynamism between the keys, so you can make it very... Quite nice. And 
and then movement. This is the stereo width. What that's doing is editing the sort of virtual distance between the mic positions inside the virtual piano. So let's take a look at the electric pianos. Uh, pressing there brings up that category. Clean Mark V, which is a road. Macros in this case, if we just reset everything, take all the effects off. Bringing it, we get a very sort of mellow. First macro kind of affects the tinkly bits. So the tines. Then the tomba uh, will affect the kind of bark, what we get when we... And then this, uh, I think, sort of seems to affect the action. So this is a very tight key release. This is a bit more... A bit more, I guess, knackered. <laughs> And this adds a bit of movement, which I think is some onboard tremolo. Uh, there's some more sounds. Here's an us. Sort of classic. What would that be? Sounds like sort of 70s. And then uh, we've got a whirly as well. And there's a couple of. Uh, you know, this has got a bit of EQ in it because we can have the master EQ to this. And then while I was there, there's also a com uh, clavinet here. Take those effect off, sounds like there's a... That sounds like it's doing something else, so let's just... Uh, I really like the clavinet, actually, in the original. Um, see if we've got another one. What I like to do with it was to uh, drop it down an octave, stick a load of effects on it, make it sound like a kind of uh, goth guitar, but obviously I can't do that without accessing the editor and sort of programming it up a little bit more. Also got a nice uh, tone wheel organ. Crow's effect, sort of, well, the sort of brightness and the fundamental. Uh, this macro add a bit of extra drive. I think this is maybe the uh, percussive element, amount of percussion and vibrato. Uh, I think the Leslie is set up to be, yeah, it's, a, it's one of the insert effects. The other thing that's kind of cool is... We've got draw bar presets here on the lower octave. And it does sound really nice, actually. I guess if you were a kind of uh, a organ aficionado, you'd probably go for something with a bit more control and draw bars, but it certainly would work for, you know, most gig situations. Uh, additionally, there's a couple of other... Obviously, a few more organs and some synth organs. And again, you know, if you need to edit those things, if you own the B3 organ, um, the tone wheel organ, you can write your own presets and it'll all work nicely. So this, let's go to the string section. This is one of the augmented strings, so this is samples. And this has got some real nice samples. There's some sample loading stuff going on in here. So we do have limited polyphony on these. Uh, there was another really nice one in here, which is more of a synth one. 18 oscillators. That looks like it's done on the Moog Modular. Let's see what that sounds like. Don't know if you can 
you see that, that's up to 50%. CPU, I'm guessing we're getting eight voices per side of the split, so that's all good. Um, a bit of DX stuff. Do a bit of brass, obviously. Yeah, that's all right. Let's have a look. Um, all the Jupiter stuff. I don't know the actual riff, but I guess that's Africa, Toto kind of thing. Split between Fairlight. So, you know, we've got a whole bunch of presets in here. And I, I guess my point is, is if you just want to play some presets and have some tweaking, then you're going to get plenty of stuff out of it. I think for us, it's so tantalising. You know, you see all these synthesizer um, uh, paradigms in there and you want to basically get in and really kind of, oh, yeah, if I just did this, I mean, it's, it's, it's inevitable we'll be doing that. And we don't get the opportunity to have that level of tweaking without access to the plugins and whatnot. OK, so let's have a look and see what... Uh, we could do with some external MIDI control. So in this case, I've got the host port is plugged in because it's got a USB host port straight into the Arturo Keystep 37. Keys just play the same thing, but I've actually got a split sound here. So what if I wanted one to play one and one to play the other? One thing that's nice about this is I've got control of the macros from the external uh, keyboard as well, which is kind of cool. So I could double up my um, my MIDI controller. So let's just see how we do that. So I'm going to go. Let's switch the overlay on. Uh, that is the shift. So we go to split part one. Let's set that to MIDI channel two, and then on the And then on this, we'll set this to two, so that means I'm just playing my low piano here, and then on... So, very easy to set up a dual uh, keyboard system. Only thing I did notice is that actually the macros don't work anymore, so now I've changed channels on here, these macros are no longer controlling the parts, which is uh, just a little bit of a gotcha, probably a very easy thing to fix um, in software. And I just it's just an example of maybe somewhere where there's just a little bit of finesse missing, you know, something that didn't get ticked on the checkbox of the updates before they went to this release. I'm sure it will be fixed very soon. I've got a box of knobs here, which I was thinking this launch control could control various things, but I'm not actually sure how one assigns sort of random MIDI controls to parameters inside this. Didn't seem to be any instruction on how to do that. Maybe that's not implemented yet, and that's something that will be coming down the line, making that a bit easier. Going back to this dreamy piano, I've got this actually loaded into the, finally, into the Analog Lab software which you can see on the screen behind me. This is a special version that we need to load so that we can talk to Astrolab. Uh, if we look at this, uh, we can see there's a link, uh, Astrolab linked, and it means that as I move the knobs as well, you can see that's reflected there. And it also works this way around. So if I move the Tomba knob, you can see that it's communicating directly with uh, the instrument. So all well and good. So that means we've got access to kind of the same patches in here as we have in here, right? That's sort of the idea anyway. So um, let's just say uh, we like that. We maybe want to edit some stuff. We're going to go in here. We can see we've chosen American Grand. We can edit the preset. So this is the preset as it looks. So this is a representation of what's actually going on in the unit. Uh, we've got individual parts. So we could add a part. Let's say let's just add, I don't know, after touch lead. Let's go there. We'll do that. And we'll, we'll say done and we go back. So now we've got two parts. So in this part, we've got the piano. I can do things like I can say I don't want the delay to go to the actually. Yeah, let's have the reverb to the piano and the delay to part two, which I will turn on. Yeah, all well and good. That works nicely. In fact, that's easier to get to. I couldn't find a way to route the send effects to each individual part. I could do the insert effects uh, from the front panel, but not, not the delay. So that gives us an advantage immediately. So now we could go in to say, well, look, there we go. I happen to have the V piano installed. So that means I can look at the actual plugin, which means I can also access the uh, the individual parameters. So that's happy days, because I'm thinking, you know, I've got my 
Uh, my presets work in here, so that should mean I should be able to edit my presets here, right? Not quite the so. It doesn't quite work that way. You have, if you want to edit the presets in real time, you have to monitor it in the output of the computer, which is a little bit confusing. So I'm going to hit. You can hear that. So there's my uh, piano. I'm going to open this up. Uh, let's add some reverb. Let's go right up here. Let's get some sort of radical sounds on here. We're going to give it a lot of squish. We're going to take the EQ. We're going to drop a bit of low end out of there. Uh, let's see what else we might want to do. Let's see what that listen sounds like. Yeah, that's got a very specific sound. Maybe we'll bring the preamp in. But you hear, I have to listen to this out of the monitor of the overdrive. What happens if we do? Yeah, we'll do that. Maybe I'll, I'll bring the uh, the room the, that round down a bit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that preset as uh, let's call it AG EQ two. I think I've already saved something, so I'm going to save that. So now I've got AG EQ two. Ah, still not there. We haven't actually loaded that in. So what I have to do now is go back here and. Go back. Uh, how does that work? Part one. So we want part one. Turn the volume up. No, that's not happening. Do you see what I mean? It's a little bit clunky. If I was working in a single mode, it might be a bit easier. In fact, if I demonstrate that now, I'll just turn this off. Let's go A G E C. So that's the sound I want. Uh, let's say I might take the reverb off there from the. Gives me a bit more of a pop piano, so we'll do. Let's save this, save preset. Okay, and then we'll come back to the library, uh, AG EQ two. So, AG EQ two. So now that should be loaded up, right? Yeah, I've got it in there. Got there in the end. So now I've got this lovely kind of quiet. of a kind of vibey kind of process studio piano but as you can see we don't have real-time control of the parameters inside here at the moment and that's something that I think is kind of a bit of a big miss uh, initially uh, Arturia told me that that's going to be coming so that means that we can edit stuff in real time uh, and it'll just work but right now it's not kind of that integrated. We have to save the preset, then load the preset, and then we will be monitoring via the computer rather than via the units. Uh, coming back here also, I should show you if, say, for instance, I'm choosing, let's get into the browsing again. Let's find uh, instruments. Let's see, uh, we'll take, uh, I don't know, Jupiter 8. Let's load a brass synth. That'll be nice. Then we can go edit preset. <laughs> That's loaded straight in. Nice one. So now let's say I want to open this. I get a little flash of it there, but OK, I need a, new ver a newer version of Jupiter 8 V4 to view the interface. And that means to make those edits, I'm going to need um, to own the, either the V collection or the standalone version, uh, you know, or the separate version. Otherwise, I can't edit those patches in great detail. I'm sort of stuck with the kind of player version and the macros and the presets I can load into the system. So you get to see how it works. I mean, basically, when tied with, if you had V collection and this, then essentially you've got a fully editable player for your V collection patches, V collection nine. So that works actually pretty nicely. It's just that those that real time connection and real time parameter tweaking is not there. And I think that's something they absolutely should be focusing on because I think that would make this a lot more killer and people would sort of get it uh, a lot more quickly because at the moment with this, this removal of a stage, it's a little bit confusing because the software is slightly quirky. So let's take a look at uh, the other connectivity because there's Bluetooth and wireless in here. So if I just bring up the overlay, and we'll go uh, to settings. In here, we've got Wi-Fi because it's got Wi-Fi connectivity. That's more for the app, which is Astrolab Connect. I don't have that at the moment uh, because it wasn't available at the time I did. Well, let's go to Bluetooth. We can set our oops back. Go to Bluetooth. Uh, we've got it switched on. Pair new device. If I just come over to the laptop, I've got Astrolab show, um, 
showing up in the Bluetooth. Now I've got some uh, Friday fun mixes here, so I'm just going to play this. Should just play straight through it now. Here it comes. Yeah, good. So now that's coming through Bluetooth. Now you'll notice the volume control, master volume doesn't affect that, and that's because the Bluetooth device sort of comes straight in and straight out. It must be added kind of later on. Um, well, that's cool, that works all right. So I've got a couple of patches here. So yeah, the point is I can play through all of that and that's fine. It does bring up one thing though, is there's no way to kind of, if that's slightly out of tune, there's no way to affect the tuning from the front panel of the global units. You know, you can't sort of go, oh, it's a bit sharp, or and bring it up. So just something to watch out for. And there is a certain amount of latency, you know, any kind of start and stop is sort of, it's quite a latent connection. So if you've got very timing critical stuff, I'm not sure how that would work. Okay, so there's a few things I haven't gone into yet. Obviously, we've got an ARP mode and, and chord modes. ARP can affect either part. Uh, there's also the audio inputs, which is a pair of combi jacks. Uh, I think these are going to be useful for processing via patches that I didn't get round to on this. I haven't had all that much time with it. Uh, but I would like to have seen a way to access those and maybe pass them through to the outputs via the uh, effects or something just all done from the front panel because, you know, I want to put a mic in, have some nice vocal sounds while I'm playing my keyboards. I imagine all that stuff is certainly possible, but it doesn't seem like it's quite there in this early version of the software. So $15.99 is going to buy you one of these things. And if you like the sound of the V collection, then that's what you're going to get with this. Obviously, there are certain poly polyphonic limitations, but remember the physical modeling gives you 48 voices. The synths give you about eight per instance. So there should be enough. And if you are a user and you want to take this stuff out on the road, then accessing all of that stuff, or, or even you haven't got the V collection, but you want to access those sounds, then you're already there. 1599 doesn't actually seem too bad, but then you've got to add in the V collection if you want to edit. So if you were using this in a kind of live production situation, you want it at the heart of your key rig, it feels to me like there just needs to be a little more finesse um, to make that an easier move. Uh, obviously the real-time parameter control from, directly from the plugin is going to be a real biggie and I'm pretty sure that's going to come along straight away. Overall though, lovely piece of hardware. The key bed is really nice. I do like the key bed. It's lovely for playing piano sounds. Really kind of feels nice. I know pr uh, bigger players are probably going to want to go, where's the 71? Where's the, where's the 73? Where's the 88? I don't know if they're going to be coming along. I would imagine if this goes well, there's no reason why not, because some people are going to want to put this at the heart of their system. Anyhow, that was the Artoria Astrolab, very groundbreaking product from them. As I said, I didn't cover everything because I just didn't have it quite long enough. Uh, but I think I'll be putting some extra stuff on our Patreon, so do keep an eye out on there. Uh, you can join us here and ask questions, and I will endeavour to ask them over there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.